Okay, so I'm on my refined paint layer, and you can see the difference it makes once it's on top of your shape painting. But without this shape painting, it doesn't look all that refined. So you really need both. So if I get rid of the sketch layer, that's all my refined paint layer was. But when you put it on top of the shape painting, it starts to look pretty full, whether it's on a gray background or a white background. So I'm going to continue with that. I just have my reference opened in preview, which allows me to kind of zoom in and move it around and then go back to my painting. I'm just using the painting tool, holding down option to steal colors from myself when needed layering things up and down, trying to get some of this strong color variety into it. Don't be afraid of different colors, even when you're going for photorealism, which I really don't want to have to go for here. But I want to show you the, the ways in which it can be achieved. So just these little highlights across the fur can be really effective at building that illusion of finish. So you kind of understand the vocabulary of it for whatever the subject is that you're painting. And you fill it out that way. You work with it that way. And usually when I'm doing demos for this class, I always have lots to say. There's always lots of things to point out. But in digital painting, you're just doing a lot of the same. Now, if I want it to get darker than it's able to get with, within the, the palette I've set up, I can set my brush to multiply mode for a short time and then every brush stroke I make will darken what's already there and underneath it. So especially into your shadows, multiply mode can be helpful. I can hit it a few times in the nostrils that way. It's different than burning. It's layering up the paint in a way that, that only darkens it. But as you're refining, that can be a helpful way to add shadows and blend colors together without simply always overpainting them. But it can also be difficult. So as soon as I'm done establishing those darkest darks, I want to go back to my normal mode and my lower opacities. Keep accidentally closing my preview. I get the underside of the mouth. Some interesting highlights there. Let's show the jaw. So I'm taking my brush to be quite small just so I can get some of that definition. finding my level of finish for this image. And then I should hopefully be able to do it a little bit faster across the, the rest of the image. Now, because I had multiply on for a little bit, I have those really dark tones to use, you know, at the base of the teeth, kind of get the shininess of the gum. And if I was going for photorealism, then those become really helpful approaches and tools.
Lots of holding down option. Lots of stealing color. Noticing all the yellows on his lips. The reason doing animals can be fun is because doing likenesses of animals is more forgiving than doing likenesses of people in terms of the exact proportions of the spaces between things on the face, like the upper lip and the bottom of the nose. But you still want to do it in a way that kind of feels right. Okay, now I might make my brush a little bit bigger again. Look at my reference. Maybe zoom out on my reference. And I'm going to try to connect that finish I got on the mouth and on the nose without having to zoom in quite so much and bring that into the eyes. This is on my refined paint layer. I start to frame in the eyes. If I zoomed in too much, I would lose the um, orientation of where the eye goes. So I always wanna keep that in mind. I want the eye to feel natural, but also kind of clean and bright using highlights and shadows, not making it look outlined like it's a cartoon. And trying to get some color in there as well. Maybe flattering my doggy with a little bit more color than is really there. The eyes are definitely going to be a focal point. And with any focal point in visual art, it's about contrast, highlights and shadows, and hard edges, whatever makes it stand out all these directional hairs around. All of that will give finish to the eye. Again, hitting option, trying to change color quite a bit. Still trying to bring some of these interesting colors into it. Like the pinks, the greens, the blues. I like to have a little bit of red by the eye. It kind of livens them up. Just lots of vigorous painting. With a furry dog, it can feel like you're painting every hair. You're not. You're just trying to define those shapes and shadows that give the illusion lots and lots of fur. And his beard. Remember to change colors. Otherwise, you're losing a lot of that individual stroke definition. Throw in some weird colors every once in a while. Give the eye something to latch on to. When you want softer, bigger strokes, just push a little bit harder on your tablet. When you want that really defined line, like these highlights of these hairs, 
My dog's named Heather because of the heather gray of her fur, all the variations in gray. That's when those little strokes are helpful, but only when they're on a nice kind of dark base paint layer so they can show up. And you find a way to paint with it that seems fun to you. And remember, this is your own stylized version. I just want to see how you're using these tools as you're learning about them and getting exposed to these different techniques in digital media. You do not need to be as precise or as representation in order for it to be an interesting painting that shows your point of view. That's what we're after. I'm lucky because I have this really rich palette of different color variations from the uniform underneath, which will require a different kind of finish than what I'm doing on the face. And by showing you something furry, like this could be someone's hair or you know anything else, but it shows you the direction of your, your brush strokes really matters and how they taper, all of that really lends to the overall finish and effect. I'm a little hesitant to zoom in because I'm liking the way this is going, but I want to show you the difference between the finish of just the shape painting and now the finish of this refined paint layer. We're hoping for a lot more subtlety and transition in this refined paint layer. Let's finish off the bridge of the nose here. You can always use Command Z if you overdo something. I want to take it backwards. Okay. So I'm going to save that. This is what it looks like without the refined paint. This is what it looks like with the refined paint. It's getting much more defined there. But then without the shape painting, you can see there's not much there. So refined paint is lots of little strokes. But these will have more personality. This looks like a, a John Singer Sargent, like beginning of a watercolor sketch, but you put that shape painting behind it, and then it has some grounding. And then you can play with the opacity of the shape painting even. As you start refining more, you might want different levels of it. But for now, I'm just going to keep it locked, keep working on that refined paint layer. And it's maybe a little tighter than I was thinking I could go. So I can loosen it up a little bit for my finish. But as I zoom in, now this is starting to look a lot more like my own work and less the work of a computer brush. And I can see where I need to still soften. Very helpful to be able to lock layers so you don't accidentally paint on the wrong layer like I just almost did. And with this refined brush at this 
basically 50% opacity. 